Okay, we uh, pick up where we left off. We're still doing some stuff with uh, uh, logarithms and exponential functions. And this is the third problem that I had mentioned in the previous video that I thought where you had to be able to convert from logarithmic form to exponential form. I mean, that's all it asked for you to do. So it's like bringing the B over here and nudging the X out of the way. The log drops off. I get N equals B to the X. Now, they might have this as B to the X equals N, but, you know, reflexive property or symmetric property of equality allows me to say if n equals b to the x then b to the x equals n. Well, this one's got a little bit of a bite to it because you have to use those properties that I had written down in the previous video. It says if x equals 4ab squared which expression is equivalent to the log of x? So you have x is equal to 4ab squared. They want to know what the log of x is equivalent to so they take the log of this side you have to take the log of this side. And the log of x is equal to, now here I'm going to uh, most likely have to expand it. This is a good example of a problem where you would want to make sure that you um, look at the way the answers are written. And of course I don't have that paper handy to see how the answers might be written. Let me see if I have it somewhere. Uh, yes I do. There we go. And that's exactly what's happened. You can see that they've expanded it. There's some plus signs, some minus signs and such. I'm going to use the first property that says that the log of a product is the sum of the logs of those factors. Now, you look there and you say, well, wait a minute, I don't see any b squared. Well, that's where they use the third property, which I've already used in a previous problem in the other video, and you bring that as a factor out in front. So this is log of 4 plus the log of a plus 2 log of b. And let's see if that matches any of them. It looks like it matches the last one there. All right, so that kind of ends it for logarithms. You can see there's, that you need to know the properties. You have to be able to convert those back and forth. Now, all of a sudden, we get into a bunch of trigonometry, which is what you guys finished up with. In this diagram, what is the sine of E? Now, you have a right triangle, so this is where you use Sokotoa. If you don't have a right triangle, then you've got to use the law of sines or the law of cosines. And in this case, it's this angle. So it says, what is the sine of E? Well, you have all three sides. Uh, the sine of E, with respect to this angle, this would be the opposite. This would be the adjacent. And of course, this has got to be the hypotenuse. It's opposite the right angle. So it is opposite over adjacent. So the sine of E is 4 fifths. And hopefully that's a choice. And then up here, I have another diagram. It says in this diagram, the measure of angle C is 90 degrees and the measure of angle A is 40 degrees and CA is 10. Which equation can be used to find AB? Well, they gave us the diagram, which is nice. If they didn't give us the diagram, that's the first thing I do is I draw out a right triangle and I know it's a right triangle because I got a 90 degree angle and I label everything. Now, wait a minute, I got, uh, is this 42 or is this 40? Oh, I can't even read. This is a 42 here. Woo. I had the 42 written down, I just didn't have it because of the diagram there. So now, uh, which equation can be used to find AB? Well, AB is this guy right here, which we would call lowercase letter c normally. So to find AB, I have the adjacent to this angle, and that's the hypotenuse. So adjacent hypotenuse, adjacent hypotenuse, I'm going to use cosine right here. So I would say that the cosine of 42 degrees is equal to the adjacent 10 over the opposite, which I've called C, but they're calling it AB here, line segment AB, or the measure of line segment AB, and that matches up with answer D. All right, the next guy up, it says in this, uh, another right triangle, uh, triangle C or measure of angle A is 90, measure of angle C, that's up here, is 59 degrees, better mark that, and CR, which is the hypotenuse, is 15. If AR is represented by C, so that's this segment here, C, uh, which equation can be used to find C? Well, again, this is a right triangle. You're going to use Sokotoa. And with respect to this angle, this is the opposite. This is the hypotenuse. You're going to use sine. So I would say that the sine of 59 degrees is equal to C over 15. Now, they might have that, they might have multiplied it out. No, they have that, and it's answer A. They were just like this. 31, in the diagram of this unit circle, unit circle means center 0, 0, radius 1, right, radius 1. 
It says, uh, let the ordered pair x, y represent the point where the terminal side of angle theta, that's this angle here in standard position, uh, intersects the unit circle. If theta is 150 degrees, what is the value of x? Well, there's two ways to do this one. One is you needed to memorize the unit circle. Okay? So you can use that. If you memorize it, it's a piece of cake because the x is the cosine. So it's the same as asking what's the cosine of 150 degrees? All right, well, the cosine of 150 degrees is negative square root of 3 over 2. Now you say, well, what if I don't have it memorized? Well, if this guy is 150, that means this little guy here is 30 because they would have to add up to a straight angle of 180 degrees. So if I drop a perpendicular down, I can create a right triangle, and I know the hypotenuse, which is the radius here of the unit circle, is 1. So I have a 30, 60, 90 to go from here to the short leg, you take half. To go from the short leg to the long leg, you multiply by the square root of 3 over 2. Now this point is the x value, so you're going to the left, the square root of 3 over 2. So it's negative square root of 3 over 2. You could do it that way. It takes a little longer to draw these out, but you can do it this way. Problem number uh, 32 does not have a diagram, and I'm probably going to draw one out here. Jack is planting a triangular rose garden. And the lengths of the two sides of the plot are 8 feet and 12 feet, and the angle between them is 87 degrees. Now, this does not mean I have a right triangle, so I'm just going to create something here. I'm going to say that this is 8 feet, I'm going to say this is 12 feet, and the angle in between is 87 degrees. What expression could be used to find the area of the garden? Well, the area of a garden, I'm going to use K for area, is 1 half times one side times another side another side, uh, times the sine of the included angle. Or I think in the book they would like one half A, B, sine C, kind of a deal like that, or one half B, C, sine A. But here are, here's two sides and here's the included angle, so my area is equal to one half times eight times twelve times the sine of eighty-seven degrees. Now. This is where you would get a calculator out and approximate this, except that I looked at the answers. I think it's this one. Yeah, and they don't have the answer written out as an approximation. They left it out as, as a product like this. Now, he has a mistake uh, in that problems uh, answers for C and D have a 12 kind of on the outside. Uh, I think that 12 is supposed to have been crossed out there, so you could probably ignore those and go with answer D here. That matches answer D. One half times one side times another side times the sine of the angle in between the two sides in the included angle. If placed in standard position, number 33 here, uh, an angle of 11 pi over 6 has the same terminal side as an angle of what? Now, I've got this diagram here, so I'm just going to kind of take advantage of it here. I'm going to erase a little bit of this. And I'm going to try to create an angle, at least approximate, an angle of 11 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6 would all the way around like this. Okay? Where this angle right here is coming downward is negative pi over 6. And so I think, ah, oh, it's going to be negative pi over 6. And then I look and I notice that all my answers are in degrees. So the first thing I'm going to do is take 11 pi over 6 and I'm going to change it in degrees by multiplying it times 180 over pi. The pi is canceled, 6 goes in that one, 6 goes into that 30 times, so I have 330 degrees. Now you'd know that if you memorize the table. 330 degrees means 330 this way means negative 30 this way. And then I go to look at my answers and I see, hey, they got negative 30 there at answer B. There's my guy, because we know it's 360 all the way around. So this is going to be negative 30 degrees. There are lots of possible answers, but that's the one that matches. What's the radian measure of an angle whose measure is negative 420 degrees? Well, I just converted radians to degrees by multiplying by 180 over pi. To change degrees into radians, you multiply by pi over 180. Now, I have a negative times a positive, so that's going to be negative. 60 goes in there 3 times, 60 goes in there 7, so it's negative 7 pi over 3. And that's the answer for number 34. So we're getting there. Almost done with the multiple choice, about, uh, well, about 68% of the way done here. And then I think there are five free responses, so we're getting there.